Hello, how are you guys doing? Y'all know what time it is. <laughs> it is um, removing the mask time. <laughs> time with me and Carlton. So hopefully you guys have had a great Thursday. Um, my Thursday has flown by. I'm really still trying to figure out where my day went. Honestly, I, um, I asked God at like... What time it was like 10 a.m i was like god i need more time today like i feel like i need i feel like my time about to get away get away from me and and it did and so um anyway anyway it, it's been all 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 great things hey hey y'all hey markeisha hey cousin linda y'all come on in y'all share the live okay hey laquita y'all share the live because I've been in prayer today. <laughs> I've been in prayer today. Go ahead, look. Laquita, you already know what time it is. Tag your friends. Call somebody. Send it to somebody. DM. Go ahead and share it. Because it's going to be lit. I, I already know it's going to be lit. And I hope you guys are enjoying um, this hair. I've been seeing. Oh, thank y'all for so much while I'm waiting on Carlton. Thank you guys so much for uh, complimenting my lip uh, for the night. So that uh, I love like Snapchat filters. But that the one that I used today, it kind of made my lipstick look pink. But my lipstick is actually a uh, really pretty like a uh, Barney purple. So this lipstick is called Too Faced, like T-O-O -O Face. They sell it at Ulta. Um, and um, it's called Unicorn. That's the other thing. It's called Unicorn. So that's my lipstick color for the evening. Hey, hey, Trina. Hey, y'all. Y'all come on in. Hey, Danae. Y'all come on in the room. So um, so anyhow, um, thank you guys so much for all the beautiful compliments. I have not had a second to even really get to respond so hopefully I'll get to be able to respond to you guys. But since I was already live, I might as well tell you guys, thank you um, so much for your love. Y'all are so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, look, for those of you who caught the other live, when God made me go live randomly this week about trimming your ends, um, I had to share on my, my one year memory today um, was me talking, was me sharing a post about us no longer being um in the cocoon but you know evolving into butterflies so i just thought that was so crazy hey miss tanya hi miss tanya um i thought it was just so crazy that um i shared that post a year ago and then i was talking about it on the live this week um about trimming your ends and so anyhow god has just been amazing like all day long i have just been having this um this feeling. Thanks, Laquita. Yeah, look, y'all, look, I'm going to come back to that. Laquita and these curls. Y'all know how I feel about these curls, darling. These curls is giving life today, baby. But um, I just, I have just been feeling in my spirit all day today. Just a place, just, I've just been in a place of excitement. Like, I am so excited about the connections that God is bringing into my life. The just the way he's revealing and, and, and positioning and um, all of the things that I have planned for for you guys. Um, I mean, it's really going to get turned up a notch. And I am so excited about October and um, and just some of the connections that God has allowed me to have. So I just pray that you guys are having, you know, um, that you guys are experiencing that, man. Like I have just been basking um in his glory like all day it's just been so good um and i looked at the calendar and realized like oh yeah we got five more days five more days before my book pre-orders my third book vulnerability art of letting go and it's just amazing like i i really be like my breath gets taken away by god and um, it's just amazing how God is just showing up, how he's just showing out. And I cannot believe that um, I can and I can't believe that in five days, um, my book, Vulnerability, Art of Letting Go, will be on sale for pre-order. So um, 
I hope y'all ready. <laughs> uh, I've been preparing today for this topic. Um, I saw that Jocelyn, uh, my market, I saw that she um, dropped uh, a snippet of the blog uh, this week from uh, Naked and Ashamed, my story of vulnerability. So hopefully you guys have seen that uh, post. Um, I'm pretty sure she'll be dropping the full link uh, here pretty, pretty soon, but I saw she kind of leaked that. So, um, I read it and I was like, wow, like I, even though I live in those moments and obviously I write every single thing that I do, um, I'm always in awe, like when I come back to it and I see it again and I'm like, Ooh, oh my goodness. You know, like I get, I get in awe of, of all kinds of stuff. Like I get, I don't know what it is. So, um, I guess it's just like, I can't believe I'm, li I'm living these moments. So I am just, um, I'm just excited to see what God's going to do tonight. Um, I've been preparing. Um, I've been talking to God about removing the mask tonight because I'm going to be speaking from the women's perspective. And so women, I'm going to be down your street. I'm going to be in your house. I'm going to be in your business uh, tonight, <laughs> tonight. So just get ready that tonight <laughs> is going to be heavy. Um, I brought my water because I may need it. Um, and so I wore a bold lip because I may need help being bold tonight. I don't know. You know, I got to live this thing out in front of you guys. So um anyhow i am just elated i'm elated 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 hey Catherine, elated um to be able to share with you guys um my vulnerability so i hope y'all ready so look make sure you're sharing please share please share please share and thank you guys for uh just enjoying carlton and i and being a part of a part of this with us, we we love Thursday nights together and we love Thursday nights together with you guys. So we have both just been immensely blessed. And thank y'all too um, for enjoying me and Alex's Bible study last night. That was so impromptu. I Like that's how I am. Like, I guess that's why God used me because, you know, I don't need a lot of instructions. I just go. And um, it was so funny because last night... Alex said, after we got off live, he said, mommy, I'm going to be famous. And I said, of course, you're going to be famous. Do you know who your mother is? Like, what are you talking about? Like, of course, you're going to be famous. And, uh, and so he said, yeah, mom, I'm going to be famous. And so then tonight he said, mom, um, I said, well, boys, I have a live tonight. And so, you know, I made sure to put the boys to bed. Hey, nanny. I made sure to put them to bed before I got on my live. And um, Alex said, well, mom, I thought I was going to go live again tonight. <laughs> he said, I thought I was going to get to tell the people, um, hey, again tonight. I was like, Alex, not tonight, but we will schedule the time for you to be able to be live. Um, so I'm just so grateful that my children understand my calling, the calling and the anointing that's on my life. I love that they are a part of the calling and the anointing that's on my life. Um, and I love how they, they too, um, are so proud of me. Uh, Trey said to me tonight, uh, my, mom, you look absolutely beautiful. And I know you're going to do really good on your live. And they both gave me big hugs and kisses. And um, to me, for them to understand what, like, understand what I carry, even though they don't fully understand it yet, but they understand it enough to know that what mommy does makes an impact. That's like, that's, that's it for me, you know? Um, and so anyhow, just thank you guys for enjoying, uh, me and Alex's time last night. Um, so that's something, Jocelyn, you can write that down. Uh, <laughs> I see you on the live, um, that hopefully I get to incorporate, um, and do more so with you guys. Cause I don't mind sharing my whole life and my kids. So, um, so yeah, I don't mind sharing. I don't mind, uh, them being a part of what I do, um, because it's eventually going to be for them and they'll carry on my legacy whenever that time comes. And so, um, 
it's just really, really neat to see their little lives evolve. So thank you guys so, so much just for, um, for everything, the downloads to the app, the messages that I receive, the shares that we get. Um, it's overwhelming, you know, like overwhelmingly good when you know that you are operating in exactly who God has called you to be. And um, I'm definitely operating in exactly who God's called me to be. And so I do it um, effort effortlessly. Can I say the word right tonight? Effortlessly. <laughs> so even tired, even drained, broke down, all of the above, God finds a way to give me um, exactly what he wants me to have in order to be the PA system for him. So um, I'm just super, 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 super excited. I can't stop telling you guys enough how um, appreciative I am of your love. Laquita, thank you for shouting me out. Um, that was super humbling to me um, and sharing and, and just being a light, you know, and seeing me and accepting me. And um, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for that. Um, for that. So thank you. And thank you for those who tag us in your purposeful, your purpose app post. Thank you for those who have been enjoying the app, who've shared it with others. Um, the app is my ministry. So I, um, I really, really, really appreciate like all that you guys do. So I, um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and start some snippets. Carlton texts me, but I can't check my text because I'm on live with y'all. So I'm sure he's going to be hopping on in a second because I already told him I was here. But um, Carlton and I, um, as we were discussing our topic and vulnerability, because we're talking a lot about it, because obviously my third book is coming out. So, and I'm living it. So um, I threw him out there first because we were talking about removing the mask. And so tonight's my night. And so as I thought about removing the mask, women's edition, I thought about like why it is I've worn a mask, um, what made me gravitate toward the mask. Um, and y'all make sure as you're sharing, drop your comments, drop your questions. Y'all are a part of the conversation. So y'all ain't got to leave me out here because... Y'all know y'all be dealing with this stuff. So, hey, Dawaski. Um, so, anyhow, as I thought about um, removing the mask and just kind of like how my life has been in removing the mask. One of the biggest things I think that made me really hide outside of trauma was the trust factor. Um, when I really started to think about my journey, especially with vulnerability, um, because I've, I was never taught vulnerability. Like I was never talked to um, about vulnerability. I don't remember growing up and that really being a topic of conversation. And to be honest with you, I never really thought about it um, ever. <laughs> like e like ever um yes Laquita look I definitely want a mask for protection and if you've read my book Purposeful Pain you know that's one of the things that I talk about um my naming naming my pain and naming my pain for me was me being able to call the thing a thing mine was lack of protection and because I hid behind the mask I never allowed people to fully get to know me or get close to me. And one of the things that most people say about me or that have said about me um, over the years and even recently is that when people first met me, they thought I was stuck up, um, that I was not approachable. I didn't have a, a spirit of like, she's really approachable. I didn't have that. And, um, and so people really... It was like they wanted to gravitate toward me. Like maybe they knew I had a light. Hey, Koana. Maybe they knew I had a light. But because of my persona, I you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't let them in. Oh, here's Carlton. Let me let him in. Um, oh, 
Well, maybe he was here. Okay, he'll come back. I wouldn't let people in. And so um, that cost quite a bit. <laughs> that cost. Yeah, we're going to talk about how that cost it. Hey. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> I saw your text, but I couldn't. No, read it's, it's, all, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so I was telling the people about removing the mask, the women's edition. Carlton claimed he wasn't gonna put me on the hot seat, but I don't believe. No, that. I'm, I'm not even I mean, about to I don't. Say. I mean, I, I don't feel. I don't mm -hmm. feel I can. I don't feel like I can put you on the hot seat. I feel like, I guess it's. I guess it's by default. It's like a, you're on a heated seat. Like the seat is already preheated. <laughs> So that's kind of that's, that's kind of what I feel. I kind of feel like the seat is already preheated. So I don't I don't need I don't need to add any extra pressure. Uh, because last week that was me. The seat was already preheated. I mean, you turned up the temperature a little bit, but other than that, it was all good. Well, so I was I was I, I was starting. So I'm gonna let you just you can just flow in where you sure. you already sure. know. I my spirit. So. Um, when I thought about the season of why I wore a mask, it was for protection. And so in Purposeful Pain, I was kind of, I addressed it and I talk about my lack of protection and I talk about why, um, I wore a mask. Um, and, it, and, and, you know, when I really, really started dealing with myself and I'm now I'm about to have a whole like coach and therapy moment with y'all tonight. Yeah. Y'all about to get y'all about to be like, well, how your sessions look? You about to be a part of it right now. Um, when I really thought about the mask and what it meant and what it symbolized for me, it was more than just protection. The mask symbolized that I didn't trust myself. The mask symbolized that I had not forgiven myself or others. I struggled a really long time with resentment. So y'all remember that song by Beyonce, Resentment? That was me. You know, I tried to forgive you, but I couldn't. And I was like that in all relationships. Like it didn't matter, romantic, family, um, friendships. Like if you, I guess because I love so hard that if you crossed me, I couldn't get past it. Like, I just, I really couldn't get past it. And there was no guide on like, okay, how do you get past, you know, people um, not being able to forgive, right? And in the church, you know, I'm a PK. So I grew up going to 50 million church services all the time. But there's still no manual on how to forgive right people tell you about forgiveness the word of god talks about forgiveness but there's no manual on how do you really do that so i struggled um all of my life it, until really now um with trust mm -hmm. so the mask for me was my ability to uh hide those things mm -hmm. it was my ability to keep the quirkiness behind the mask, right? Like literally the day I, you know, cause now we're all wearing masks and I was in the store and sometimes I talk to myself. Uh, like I have thoughts outside and literally I was talking to myself and I thought, oh, I'm glad I got this mask on so people don't know I'm talking to myself. <laughs> cause I was having a thought, mm -hmm. right? I was looking for multivitamins for my kids and they didn't have it. And I was like, okay, well, shoot, I just leave it on the list. I'm just, and I, and I was just really talking to myself in Kroger's. Okay. And, um, and so for me, that's what the mask symbolized. I could be that person without people really knowing. And, um, Wearing the mask costed, cost me a lot because it's like I explain to people who have walls up all the time that when you have a wall up, um, it makes it impossible for people to, it makes it impossible for God to let in anything and for the stuff that you need to leave for it to go. 
Like it can't go because it's a wall. You know what I'm saying? You can't walk through a wall. Um, and so a lot of times people, women in particular, we struggle with that. Uh, the other issue, the other reason that I struggled with uh, having a mask was because I had not, I had not experienced where showing somebody my pain benefited me. Um, hey, look, my mom's on. Hey, mama. I hadn't shown, I had not seen where showing my, like showing my trauma benefited me. And like most people that have not romanticized with the word vulnerability, but they sleep with the word trauma, uh, we struggle with what's going to happen if I show you my scars. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen if you know exactly how what I went through affected me? Uh, thanks, Mama. And so um, that right there is what keeps a lot of women in bondage and you know i i always tell people words have power and that words have meaning and for me i had to get really clear about what vulnerability meant what transparent what transparency is and i under i, I began to understand that just because i'm clear with you about where i am does not mean that I'm being vulnerable with you. Because if you don't know on a scale of what, it's like when you go to the doctor and they say on a scale of one to 10, how much pain are you in? They, first of all, they know you're not there to bring cookies. They know you there because you're in pain. So because they know that, they need to know on what level, what magnitude am I dealing with? That's what vulnerability is. A lot of us do not even know what vulnerability is, which is why we can't even get to that place because we don't even know what it is and we don't know what it entails. We think vulnerability is an emotion like crying, yelling, screaming, fussing. That is not vulnerability. If anything, that's some of that is childish <laughs> and immature. The other half of it is just the emotion. I can cry, but that don't mean that I'm vulnerable. Sometimes me crying is what's like the boil up before I punch you in your face, right? You ever saw people that they cry before they fight? It's, because what, what that is, is um, locked up. When you're locked up and you don't know what to do, your emotions is what shows up. So the rage, punching a wall, cussing people out. <laughs> like that's just the reaction of what's actively taking place on the inside. And uh, look at my mom, she's gonna preach tonight. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability is truth uh, personified. Yeah, correct, correct. And um, so I had to really get, really get to that place. And when I told God that I wanted to allow uh, people to really love me, know me, like me, I knew that I would have to get to this point. If I wanted the, the next relationship that God has for me to be the example of how Christ really loved the church, like that song of Solomon type love, I wasn't going to be able to walk around with like mask on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I wasn't going to be able to walk around traumatic. And um, vulnerability is um, one of those things that even today is still a struggle um, because there's moments that your insecurities show up and they say, Carlton's not going to understand if you say that. You know, um, if you tell somebody that, they're going to look at you different. If you express that this is how you're feeling, now they know how to manipulate you. Because we're always wanting to be in control. Vulnerability 
don't let you be in control. Vulnerability opens, it becomes a gateway for people to truly decide. I wrote a quote this morning, Carlton, at 6.52 a.m. You know, I'm big on numbers. And it said, um, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I can't remember exactly how I said it and I can't go and look at it because we laugh. But basically, I was saying that um, it's, it's tough when your desire is to, to love, but the fear of failure will keep you from it. Mm-hmm. That's the issue of vulnerability. People like to um, overindulge in other things to mask the things that they're dealing with. So people that are quote unquote workaholics, Mm -hmm. they're workaholics because they can control work. I can control how many hours I sit at this computer. I can control how many hours I stay up at night working. What I cannot control is how much I can control how much I love you, but I cannot control how much you will love me back. Because I cannot control how much you will love me back and I know how hard I love, the fear of that, I can't handle it. So most people hide behind workaholic, all this kind of stuff. And I knew that in my marriage, I was not vulnerable. I was taught you know, what I saw was um, what I learned and taught myself was um, never let them see you sweat. Never tell people how you, never, like, never, when you get to me, you don't need to know. Because uh, if you get, if, if you know, you may try to get back at me, right? And now you, you know, the whole idea of defeating um, an enemy or a competitor is to know their weakness. So if I show you my weakness, you'll know where to go. You know what I'm saying? It's like you playing ball. If you know my ankle hurt, you're going to constantly go to that right because you know I can't I can't move that fast, right? And um, so I was taught the passiveness. Just don't say anything. Just don't talk about, hey, Shantae, don't talk about how you really feel. Don't express um, your needs, because if you express your needs, um, you will be taken advantage of. And then when you see the women in your life, your aunts, your girlfriends, people that you encounter at church, school, whatever, you see that they can take an advantage of and you like, no, nah, I don't want that. So I, I can't handle that. And I'm a very type A person. I, there's certain things I can't handle. Um, so because of that, I wore the mask of I'm not hurt. It's not, it's not really bothering me. Let's just move on. I did that a lot in my marriage. You know, stuff would happen. That stuff would like set me back mentally. Emotionally, I remember when I emotionally died in my marriage. And I didn't talk for like two months, maybe three. I did not talk for like three months. And like literally, like wouldn't hardly say a word. And he would be like, what's wrong? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, why you want to? I literally emotionally shut down. When uh, there's a quote that I saw circulating around that says a woman leaves mentally before she leaves physically, that's the mask because we internalize things. And as we internalize it, uh, it shows up on the outside. But if you don't intimately know me, you won't, you won't know. If I just keep saying stuff like, I'm good, I'm all right, I'm okay, you'll take that as face value, right? So in my marriage, that's how I was. I'm good, I got it, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay. Oh, you did that again? Okay, it's all right. Oh, you still, you still playing with me? Okay, it's okay. I forgive you. You you gonna stop? But I hadn't healed from all the other like all of other disappointments. So but so if you look at the manual, the old manual on how to love me, you 
didn't even know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really, 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 really did not know me. There's things that my mom did not know about me until Purposeful Pain, like, started getting written. And we're very close. Um, this thing my mom still don't know about me. <laughs> and we very close, right? Like, it's, like, it's a real life journey. So I never want people to feel like vulnerability is like, like, once you get it, it's good. No, it's like a constant struggle because the enemy constantly brings up again that history, that past. And if you haven't been successful in it often, um, it's rough in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like, it literally took me two years to write this book. Two years I lived it. Still living it. <laughs> like, and that was like, it's reactivated again. And I know that a lot of women that are watching this live and a lot of men, I pray that tonight I give you insight on the woman that you're desiring to love. You see my mom being messy. I, I pray that uh, I give you the insight of why the woman that you love appears to be locked up. Um, the first thing I had to do was learn how to identify that there was a problem. And what did those problems really mean? So I would say stuff like, I remember uh, coming out of a season, out of that season, like in my broken season, like when I decided that I wanted, like I was in my divorce, like saying like, I got trust issues. And I thought the trust issues were, I didn't trust um, another man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't trust another person. But the trust issues was, I didn't trust myself. Um, I didn't trust myself to make good decisions. Hey, Kedra. Hey, Peter. I didn't trust myself to make good decisions. And so because some of the decisions that I made in my past didn't pan out in my, in my present moment, it made me... Uh, question my anointing. It made me water down who I was. It made me um, retreat. You know what I'm saying? And and it also made me stagnant. It was like I couldn't make a decision. And um, that costed me a lot. Like that costed me a whole, whole lot. Um, but it was all behind that mask. You know what I'm saying? It was all behind that mask. And what women don't know when you're in it and when you're wearing that mask is that mask is facial bondage. You're not free. You know what I'm saying? You're hidden, but you're not free. And when you're not free, like that, you can't love people not the way you need to, not the way you need to be operating. It's like you're always operating at like half capacity. And unfortunately, when you look at the lineage of uh, African-American descent, when you look at our ancestors, women were not, Black women, we weren't taught, like, softness. We weren't taught vulnerability. We weren't taught that this is a safe space to be um, open and honest and transparent. Like, we didn't have this dialogue. You know what I'm saying? We had um, pray about it. We had, um, yeah, correct, mom, wearing a mask makes pimples. Uh, we had pray about it. We had, it's going to be all right. We had, he just being a man. We had, um, it's going to get better, just stick in there. Never had a place to be safe. Never had a place. Like, Black women wear a mask because we don't feel safe. <laughs> we don't feel safe with our own truth. We don't feel safe with our own identities. We don't feel safe with um, our own transgressions. You know what I'm saying? And so this is not celebrated. What's celebrated is cussing, fighting, twerking, key in his car you know what i'm saying like that's what's celebrated we're not it's not celebrated for a woman to be like this like how you and i are right now 
Right now, if you are a man and you're watching this, pay attention to Carlton's body language. I feel safe just sitting here. There's something that when he opened his mouth, you, he got to drop the cash app on, right? But in this moment, he realizes I'm walking through something. He's not telling me that I'm wrong. He's not arguing me about why I feel that way. He's not telling me that that can't make sense. Where you got that from? You just like your mama and my mama on the line, right? <laughs> like he's not, he not combating my emotions. He's literally sitting there taking it in. Because at this point, this is what it looks like. This is what intimacy looks like. For those of you who've never seen it, for those of you who've never encountered intimacy, this is intimacy. This is what a black woman needs, a woman period needs, a woman that has gone through trauma needs, a place to just be. This is where you can remove a mask. This is the, the environment. And it's not about his silence. It's about his patience. Most of us hide because we don't feel like you're going to be patient with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, Carlton, can you be patient enough to wait on me until I get to this place? You know, are you going to abandon me like the last relationship when I just can't seem to measure up to what you're expecting of me right now? These are the, these are the insecurities that women have. We're just not talking about it. We want to be able to be at this level where I can tell you I'm afraid, you know, that's right. Do I have your ear, you know, and, and to have it uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. I didn't have this ever <laughs> in my life, you know, in any male encounter, it has not been like this for me. Right. So I had to lose <laughs> I had to first learn how to have these moments, just me and God. I had to learn how to forgive myself. That's what helped me remove my mask was me first learning how to forgive myself for the decisions that I made from a traumatic mindset, right? And um, I had to free myself. Then I had to free the people that I felt deserve to be in bondage. I shared with a girlfriend last night that um, what helped me learn how to forgive was me taking titles off of people like mama, daddy, pastor, manager, brother, sister. When I started taking titles off of people, I took the expectations off of them as well. Because expectations can ruin a relationship when they are not vocalized. Like, if you didn't know, hey, hey, y'all, come on in. Y'all share the live. And men, look, y'all drop your comments, drop your questions. This is the moment that you get a, you get a real Black woman <laughs> to give you what you've been trying to ask for, okay? Um, but when I took titles off of people and I looked at the trauma of the seed, I learned that they were no different from me. I learned that them being called mama didn't mean perfect. You know what I'm saying? Them being called mama didn't mean that they didn't go through something. And a lot of times with us as women, the reasons we struggle with forgiveness so much and we and it's so and it's so culturally our culture struggles with forgiveness. It's like we've gone through trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma to the point where we are so hard, we're no different than a Pharaoh. You know, when Moses came and he said, let my people go, God told him to tell Pharaoh that. But Pharaoh kept trying to um, negotiate with God, right? Okay, tell God to remove the frogs. I'm gonna let the people go. Still ain't do it. Tell God to take away the, you know, the, the this and the that. 
-hmm. and still do he was negotiating and and but his heart was hard why and god kept saying what let just let it go and a lot of times that's like that is we are pharaohs we're unable to let it go because we want to hold on to titles and when we put titles on people like when when i when i fully forgave my dad it was because i took the title off and i looked at him from seed form forgiving him freed me when i was able to forgive my ex and all the people that helped me get to the, all of my Judases that helped me to get to this point, it was because I took the expectation and I looked at the seed. When I realized like, oh wait, let me, like where you came from again? Like how you grew up again? I expected family to be your value, but you ain't never had one. I see why you don't respect it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's what, helped me to remove my mask what put my mask on was pain and I felt like I had to become a warrior you know like I felt like I had I was I was in the fight of my life at all times and it goes back to again our ancestry when you look at us as women being in slavery and us you know being raped and us being you know having our husbands snatched out of the homes from us killed in front of us our sons taken out of our hands you know what i'm saying like all of that trauma that's still that was still the seed you and i are just the leaves right of the tree <laughs> but that was still embedded in us like that's what we were taught to just deal with it we was taught to just go with it. You know, we weren't asked, how did you feel when you lost the baby? Really? You know what I'm saying? How did you feel when you, you know, you went through that season of, of abandonment? You know, why haven't you dealt with your abandonment issues? And that's why it's so important, like you always say, Carlton, that in our single seasons that we address these potholes. Right that we address them and that we don't just fill them with another void. You know, culture tells us fill it with sex, fill it with alcohol, mm -hmm. fill it with the club. Hey, Brenda Pierre, fill it with, um, you know, fill it just with, with, with people. Just fill it with things. That's, you filling it with things will cost you later. And I had to get to that point where it was like, these things aren't even feeding me. And if I, you know, when I, um, when I went through my divorce, um, my mom's on here. The advice I got from her and my dad was, uh, take your time. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Take your time. What am I supposed to be doing? You know what I'm saying? What, like, what's that supposed to mean? Take your time doing math problems. Take your time building your credit. Take your time putting money in your bank account. Like, what's that supposed to mean? It was no further instructions, right? So I had to go and write a manual. Live a manual, write a manual to start teaching people. And at this stage of my life, like, I remember telling, and I said this to my mom, like, um, I was like, I don't want to, like, I don't really desire a relationship for very, for like at least a year. No, two years. I would not openly say that I desired a relationship. Like at all. I was like, God, mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. and it wasn't until God addressed me and said, you don't trust me. He said, you trust me with your money. You trust me with your purpose. You trust me with your children. You trust me with your job. You trust me to get you from point A to point B every day, but you do not trust me with your heart. That was the hardest conversation I ever had with God in my whole life, was to tell him I did not trust him with my heart. Because trusting him with my heart meant that I had to be open enough to let somebody else come in. Somebody that, again, I couldn't, I can't control like, I can't control how you about to react when I stop talking. Like, where you gonna go? I don't even know. 
what you about to ask me, what you gonna say, what, you know, what experience that you've had with a woman that looks like this or a woman that looks like my old version of myself. Cause I know you've had it. I know you have, cause it ain't that many that look like this. Majority of those women on this live right now, this is probably the first time mm, they have heard what's been in their head mm -hmm. vocalized mm -hmm. outside. Mm -hmm. well, uh, I, I promise you. And all of that has to do with that trust factor. And when God addressed me about not trusting him with my heart, that's when I had, like, that's when I knew I had to get serious about my journey. Because the claps were, uh, I didn't move on. Like, I didn't move on too fast. You know, I'm not dating. So now you good, right? Because you're not dating, so you must be good. No, I'm prepared. Like, no, this what you this like this what preparation looked like. You know what I'm saying? And then I and so you know my parents accepted me saying that like, hey, you know, I just I, I don't really want to ever be I, like if I don't never if I'm never in another relationship, I'm okay. That's when I knew that I was like, okay, God, this is not me. And my mama tell you she on this live. My mom ain't never met no, she ain't met no boyfriend. Hmm. She be asking, <laughs> like, are you like, why I don't know? Why every time I think I'm going now, because that guard, that mask, right? That mask. And um, and so when God got me together, I was like, all right, I'm gonna trust you. And trusting him exposed me it made me right it made me get uh vulnerable it made me get to this version of myself where i got comfortable hearing my own truth you know and um <laughs> mr nate said wow yes yeah, you said it first first time here was been in my head not spoken out loud yeah i know i, I know i was gonna be the spokesperson and um I told God, I said, look, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to do this uh, love thing again, I want my whole life to be the example that you're good. Like I want when people look at my life, they be like, dang, God is really good because I know who Lauren was and they not like this ain't even the same person. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted my life to be that. And so I got very intentional. Um, and it's still been hard. You know what I'm saying? There's been moments like when I'd be like, God, I just want to go back to when it's easy. You know, it's easy to not have to worry about vulnerability. Like it's easy to not have to share my time. You know what I'm saying? With someone else or all this other stuff or even think about it for me. And, um, that's kind of where I've gotten like to the point where the removing the mask had to first start with me before I could have it with anybody else. And now I know that I'm at the, I'm at, I, I always say that I'm at the better version of myself, not the greatest. Cause I haven't, I haven't gotten to the greatest yet. I'm literally still climbing the mountain, which is what I wanted. I wanted to still be climbing the mountain and I wanted people to watch me climb. And hopefully when I turn back, there's some people right behind me. You know what I'm saying? That's like, okay, if she going to climb this mountain, it looked like she getting free. I'm going to go with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't want people to see me at the top of the mountain and think, like, dang, that mountain way too high. Like, I can't, like, I ain't about to go up there. You know, like, I don't think I'm going to make it. I wanted people to be a part of my journey as I journeyed. I didn't want to be talking from up instead of that, up, down to people. And um, so that's what removing the mask has been like for me. It's been... Um, really becoming naked and unashamed. It's been feeling what safe feels like and enjoying it. It's been enjoying the company of myself, you know? Um, and I've learned how to write, like I've write my own manual, you know? Um, and I think that for a lot of women on this live, the men that are in your life that are asking you What's wrong? I challenge you tonight to stop lying and saying nothing. I challenge you tonight to stop lying and saying that you're okay when you're not. 
I challenge you tonight to trust that even if they don't understand what you feel, that you just let your voice be heard. That tonight that you decide that um, you acting like you're okay ain't okay. <laughs> you know, like stop, stop privately hating what they do and not telling them. Mm -hmm. um, because that doesn't fix it. You know, tell him why it hurts. Start telling people your why. Start telling people why, what, what is that pain attached to? You know, like I, I can't handle um, the abandonment. I don't do well with uh, gray areas. I don't do well with um, people that say that they're going to be there and then they don't show up. Like, uh, like lack of explanation and me don't work well. I've been on this journey with you, Carlton, for over a month. Mm -hmm. I texted you and I said, hey, are you ready to go live tonight? I hadn't talked to you all week. I don't have to. Mm -hmm. You have shown me such stability that I trust that I can text you 15 minutes before the live and mm -hmm. of course you're ready. I know you're ready. Because you've given me that place of safety, right. that right. consistency. Right. And so for Black men that are listening, for men, period, not just Black men, but men, period, that are listening, a woman needs consistency. Consistency. I don't care what she tell you. I don't care how many lies, how many times, I'm fine. That's a lie. She's not fine. She's still grieving that daddy issue, and you're about to beat above that. Um, and so for me, I, um, Jackson called you Mr. <laughs> Safety. <laughs> Safety. And, um, and for me, that has been huge. So I know that I can count on you. I knew I could go ahead and start the live. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you text me when you text me. I just knew you were coming mm -hmm. because you've already shown that you going to be there. <laughs> You've already shown that, you know what I'm saying? You you're, you know what time we got to do this. Right. I know you didn't go and schedule a coaching session at this time of night. Right, right. Now, whenever Thursday, we've been doing this. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, for me, it makes it easy to be vulnerable yeah. with you in front of all these people mm -hmm. because you've created that environment. And um, I want us as women to help the man in our lives, whether it's a husband, a boyfriend, or even your own father. Because I had to help my dad learn how to create that space. Because that age group, as you and I have talked about, they were not taught that. And I, I'm sick of us thinking that just because we didn't see it in our childhood or growing up, that that means that, um, that, that, means that um, you can't change the narrative. That's not what that means, mm -hmm. you know? Just say you don't want to change it, or just say you're afraid of changing it, or just say, I don't know how to change it. A woman will coach you on how to be present for her when she knows that you're open to coaching. Mm -hmm. You'll get this when I know that I'm not coming to a combat war. You'll never get this if I fear for my life. You'll never love me like this if I fear for my life. Or if I feel like you're not going to be open. And so... Um, this is what it looks like. So for me, why I can't handle uh, being with a man that uh, does not consistently show up when they say they do is because that's a childhood trauma. And it was um, one of those things where, you know, my dad would be like, we're going to go to Disney World and we're going to go on this day. And then that day came and we ain't packed nothing and ain't 
And nobody's saying that we're not going either, right? And like nobody's saying that we're not going. And the day come, and you're like, hey, we going to Disney World? You act like we ain't never been nowhere. It's not about it's not about mm -hmm. us never right, being right, nowhere. Right. It's about you scheduled yeah. something. You gave me a promise. I can't find you in a daylight with a flashlight. So what am I taught? Go to your room. Now you acting ungrateful. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not acting ungrateful. I don't understand why we not going. And it could have been a lot of reasons. Something came up. Somebody died at the church. We ain't got the money. I, I don't know. It could have been any reason. But it was never explained. So what happens when things go unexplained? We make up theories and thoughts in our minds, and they're typically negative. I don't deserve to go. I'm not good enough. So what happens? As a woman, we try to, you know, especially for women, because we desire a man. So we, we, you know, we want to try to, like, maybe I need to do this. And if I do this, then, I'm a, then that'll make you do that. Why? Because I'm still trying to stay in control of the situation. So now I'm trying to manipulate a way to make it work where I feel safe. That's what we're not telling y'all. <laughs> this is the truth. <laughs> the whole <laughs> truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> okay? And so the first man that showed me consistency, I married. Because I had not experienced it. And um, I hadn't experienced it. Hadn't seen it. And that's how I got to that point, right? And when you're in pain and you're not healed, you're only looking for one type of medicine to, fit, to, to be the solution to the one problem that you're having. If I'm having a migraine, I'm only looking for Tylenol. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to look for Tylenol if I know it caused cancer. I'm going to pray about it. I'm like, just, I'm going to touch right here. You pray real quick because I know God can heal me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not going to go find Tylenol if I know it's going to cause cancer. But when you're broken, when you're broken and that's the solution, it makes you stay longer than what you were supposed to. Because you're like, okay, I'm not going to find nobody else to love me like this. I'm not going to find nobody else to care for me like this. You know, this one, I finally found this one person that's doing this one thing the way that I need it done. So guess what? You know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to just stick it out. I know he not, I know, I know he lying to me, Carlton. I know, you know what I'm saying? I know he don't, I know that I don't have his heart neither, but it look good. We look good on pictures. You know, we, we making this kind of money. We, we live in this kind of life. So I'm going to just stay in it, Carlton. Mm -hmm. And we, and we allow loyalty to become our jail cell mm -hmm. and never, never, ever removing the mask. The issue with women not getting vulnerable is it makes uh, men never get vulnerable. You were able to be vulnerable with me because I'm, you've seen it's been a back and forth it's been a back and forth since i've met you mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so you can be that but when i'm if i was like uh judgmental mm -hmm. we probably would have lasted two right. weeks right you couldn't have been yourself you know what i'm saying um and so for women i really need y'all to hear me and hear me very clearly a man will never love you at your maximum if all you show him is your minimum. Mm -hmm. He don't know it's a scar if you acting like it's a beauty mark. He don't know that when he don't answer his phone, you automatically think he cheating. Because all the men in your life, that's what they was doing. And so you just really put him in that same category. He don't know that. Because you're not being honest. And when you're not being honest, he can only partially love what you partially show. Right? Isn't that what you told me a couple weeks ago? 
I agree. And I need us to start getting vulnerable and explaining why. And I mean specifically why. Not that, not that BS. Not that cute stuff. Not that stuff that's going to let you still lay on his chest tonight. Because one thing about a man is that when he feels like he is needed in that moment, he shows up. He shows up. He'll never show up if you never act like you need him. He will retreat if when he try to show up, you act like a boa constrictor and snap and bite him. <laughs> and I was like, he, he don't want to hold with a snake. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we got to stop that. We got to stop acting like we good when we not. We got to start saying stuff like, I didn't heal before I got in this relationship with you. So I may need to take a break because I don't want to cut on you. I may need to go to counseling because I got some unresolved issues that have nothing to do with you. <laughs> um, and when you need to be vulnerable, you need to say that. Hey, I need to have a conversation with you. And, I, and in this moment, I don't need you to have anything to rebuttal with. I don't need you to try to be a solution fixer. I just need you to be present. Mm -hmm. That's like, give people, give people, a, 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 you know, give them a warning. Tell them what you need. Stop raging out. Stop making them pay for stuff that they didn't even know about because you never, ever told them. That's what I did. So I, I, I did all the bad stuff <laughs> so that y'all could stop doing all yeah. the bad stuff. You know what I'm saying? I forfeit. I, did, I, I took all the losses so you can have all the gains. That's why. And so um, this season for me is very, um, I'm delicate. I'm delicate in this season because um, that's what vulnerability brings. You know, it's the freeing, it's the happiness but it's all the delicacy a woman is designed to be delicate you know like that's it oh uh, mom so what if they run during the introduction well this is the thing if they run during the introduction are they really a help me mm -hmm. a help me does not just a woman a help me describes the relationship so if you're truly there to help me, because relationships expose, that's why they work, then that means you should be able to sit there with me. How your vows say that we gonna be together in sickness and in health, rich or poor, that's sharing, sharing extremes. Mm -hmm. Like, if you, can, you mean to tell me you can be there if we rich or poor, but not if I'm telling you where I'm hurting? You don't love me. You love the fi you love the use of me. You love the fact that when you sleep with me, we're not fornicating no more because we married. <laughs> but you don't love me. You know what I'm saying? If I can't get naked and ashamed with you, you don't love me. People like to say I'm naked and unashamed. Devil is a liar. It's not true. Mm -hmm. The reason some of us will get naked physically and not emotionally is because we are ashamed and that's why half of y'all your husband don't know you he don't know you he don't know nothing about you he know what you pretend to be he know that you act like you're a superwoman but your husband don't know you he laying next to a stranger every single night he don't know you he making love to a stranger matter of fact he making love he don't even know what you is just sex because you ain't even now because a woman can fake. We're really good at that. <laughs> we are. We're really good at that. We fake like we happy. We fake like we enjoy being a mom. We fake like we like our jobs. We fake like we like being a woman. I remember there was a season I didn't even like being a woman. I remember telling my own mom, I don't, A, I didn't want kids. 
And if I had kids, I didn't want to have a daughter because being a woman was too doggone hard. Like, I'm glad I got boys. They don't, they'll never know what a menstrual cycle is. They'll never know what, <laughs> you know, they'll never know what uh, having a baby is like. They'll never, never know what it's like to hear mama's baby, daddy's maybe. Because see, mamas don't have choices. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they, they'll never know what that's like. Because to us, most men, they get to just kind of do their own thing. They don't say, hey, uh, can I, they don't do the accountability thing. That's another thing that we don't do in our culture. We don't be accountable, mm -hmm. right? We just be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out tonight. Oh, okay, we got two kids at daycare clothes at six. I guess you're not picking them up. And I guess you're not coming home to help me with them because you, it's football season again. So Carlson going, you know, he going to watch the Pittsburgh Steelers. So he ain't coming home, but I got to go home. I don't get the option to say that I'm just not coming home. I don't get the, but, and what, what you don't, what men don't realize what that says to a woman, abandonment, you in this by yourself, them, your kids, that's for you to do. But I didn't make them by myself. Right. So then I start flashing out. You come home. I'm hungry. I'm slamming doors. You know what I'm saying? You talking about what's wrong? Why you so cold? I don't want to talk to you. And I don't want to express to you what's wrong because if I express to you what's wrong, all you going to bring up is what your mom, well, my mama, she took care of all the kids. I'm not your mama. And, and, the, and the fact that we have allowed uh, the men in our lives to not be held accountable for so long, <laughs> That's why they're not. That's why mama's baby, daddy's maybe is a coined phrase. That means there's, there's this is an accountability thing. It don't mean he ain't the baby daddy. That just means that he have options <laughs> that we don't have. But that's because we don't say, I need you to come home tonight. I know you want to go out, but I need you to help me tonight. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I don't want to snap on the kids. At least come help put them to bed and, you know, just go catch the second half, you know, whatever. Compromise. We don't say that. We just be like, oh, okay, then. And then we call our mamas or we call our homegirls and we talk about what we mad about. But I never tell you, Carlton. So you think Oh, Lauren, cool. She's going to let me, you know what I'm saying? Like, she, she ain't got no problem. So when you're not vulnerable women, Carlton don't know how to show up. A man, a man doesn't know how to show up for you when you're not vulnerable about the issues that you're dealing with. So then they're forced to deal with the backlash of you. Quietness, the meanness, the coldness, um, and at some point it starts to fester into the thing that kills every single relationship. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you put that wall up, Hey, Kenitra, when you put that wall up, it's over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's over. So Carlton, thank you tonight You're welcome. for being the example mm -hmm of what safety looks like. Right. And I pray that every man that's going to watch this live, because they're going to watch it. They watch it at night when me and you ain't known about <laughs> You know, our views be going right, up. Right. I pray that every man that watches this tonight watched you mm -hmm. and watched the posture of a king and a leader. Mm -hmm. Because a leader listens. A leader is in tune with the team, right? He's a part. He's a part by, by listening, by understanding, not rebuttaling, not saying, well, you said you was going to be at eight o'clock, you ain't here at eight o'clock. Not that. He's not a warden, he's a partner. And this is what it looks like. So for the men that say, my daddy ain't, ain't <laughs> never do that, I don't know what it's like, great. <laughs> I have called to. And he has done an amazing job tonight. And I cannot wait to sit at his feet as a woman and listen to him pour back into me so that women 
that are on this live that have not seen the example of what it truly looks mm -hmm. like to remove the mask, we'll see it tonight. So that's that's removing the mask, the woman's edition. That is it. That Just is cat. it. In a, that is it in a <laughs> nutshell. Um, like that. That's the life. Um, and I do not um, want to mess up anything that you did. Everything was beautifully said, and this is a perfect example of vulnerability, right? And even me as a man, right? And I'm listening to you talk, and I am a man, so. Mm -hmm. I can't count how many times in my mind I wanted to jump up and say something. But when it comes to vulnerability, sometimes you just have to sit back and listen. I've listened to you be vulnerable and give you the safe space for an hour, right? And that's exactly what vulnerability looks like. So from a man's perspective, it's just sitting back and listening and listening with the right intent. Because again, mm -hmm. I wanna hear past trauma, pain, and why you are who you were and why you are who you are right now and ultimately who are you trying to become? Because the only mm -hmm. way that I can help you or use the word like you mentioned, be a helpmate, is if I hear you. I have to hear what you're saying. I have to listen to what you're saying. I have to be actively listening, right? So again, ultimately, I'm not here with my cell phone. I'm not checking the game, right? This is vulnerability. If you're being vulnerable with me, again, tonight, that's my job, Mr. Safety, right? And we got to ultimately, as men and women, right, we all have to adopt our role. Mm. My role tonight was listening. That was my, that's my role tonight, right? You know, my role isn't to get on here and preach and things along those lines. My role is to listen, right? Because that's what sets this safe space. Because if I'm constantly interrupting you when you're being vulnerable, it's like, oh, he ain't going to listen to me like you mentioned, right? It's like, as soon as I say something, he has something to say. And it obviously works the same way around if a man is being vulnerable too, contrary to belief. Yeah. And I know yep. African-American women, right? I love y'all, right? But I know as soon as I say something that rubs you the wrong way or something that you disagree with, rah, 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 rah. But for an entire hour, I gave you the floor and say, be vulnerable, Lauren. Because I know the people that are watching this live and the people that are gonna watch the replay, they're gonna see a perfect example of what vulnerability looks like. A woman being open and telling the entire truth. You know, like you said, you're taking losses so we can gain, right? So at the end of the day, there are women that need to hear this. A woman being open, giving the honest to God truth. I'm, I've gone through a divorce and I wasn't this in my uh, marriage. And this is what I was in my single season. And this is, you know, back when my dad did this. So again, you're being vulnerable and you're being open. And a lot of times women aren't taught to do that and women don't do that. And a result of it, a result of it, it is as men, we have to sit back and listen. And we can't listen to respond. You know, again, we have to listen to hear where you're coming from and listen to see, hey, how can I help Lauren be a better woman? Or how can I help Lauren become the woman that God has called her to be? On the mm -hmm. flip side, as a woman, and that's willing to if I'm a, if I'm a if I'm a man that's willing to listen to you be vulnerable, you have to be willing to be vulnerable. Because that's what happens on the flip side. You might have a man that wants to listen with the right intent, but like you mentioned before, when have I been vulnerable and it's helped me? So now you're not gonna be vulnerable with someone who is giving you a safe space. Now hmm. is that on the man? 
because I hear a lot, right? Well, the man should have listened and he should have did this and he should have did that. There are some men that are willing to sit back and listen like I did. But that woman is like, uh, the last time I was vulnerable, I got burned. I have never been vulnerable and it has benefited me. So I am no longer going to be vulnerable, even if I have a quote unquote Mr. Safety. So that's a half, that's a part of the issue too. So only thing that I would add to what you said, like I said, again, that's a cash up, that's a sermon, that's a whole, you know, YouTube DVD series, you know, whatever you want to call it, because that first hour is vulnerability. So if someone does not know what vulnerability looks like, that first yes. hour of this live, please rewatch it, share, tag people. If you want to see vulnerability and ultimately vulnerability is going to lead to the relationship that you, your heart desires and the relationship that God has for you and a relationship that you want, because I caught something earlier, I think it was your mom that said, you can't love somebody completely if you only show yourself partially. So that's what happens too, right? You know, we are asking men to love women as Jesus loved the church but if you're not vulnerable and showing me your whole entire self and who you are and where you came from and where you are, then I can only love you but so much. And you can't right. be frustrated. Well, he only loves me but so much, but he's only loving you to the capacity that you're giving him room to work with. Because if you're giving me this much capacity, then that's as far as I can love you. I can't love you out here. If you're only giving me this, you got to give me this. This is me. This is Lauren Jackson, right? And you have to put it on the table. And the right person is going to listen with the intent and say, how can I help you be better? And hey, we're going to work through this together. And ultimately understand that vulnerability, uh, one thing that I will share is vulnerability is a process. Come because on. it's a process, not necessarily to, to get to where you are, right? I'm not talking about just that part. But Philippians 3.14 says we have to forget the past and look forward to what's ahead. So we have to stop letting what happened in the past determine our vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm here ready to listen, ears wide open, no phone, no distractions. And you're like, nah, I got burnt before, so I'm okay, I'm cool. Now... I can only love you based off of that. And I could try to pry and try to figure out, like, are you sure you're okay? And some women, like you said, get snappy. I'm okay. I'm fine. Right? And I'm like, well, I, I'm, I don't want the smoke. I'm cool. Right? <laughs> so now I'm only loving you within this, this little square right here when even though I want to love you here, but I can only love you here because that's what you're giving me room to work with. So mm -hmm. vulnerability is a process. So we cannot conform to what we've experienced or what we know. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we have to enter vulnerability. That's why that single season is so, so, so important. It's so, so important. I've talked about liminal space and talked about that single season. You have to heal because you don't want to go into a relationship saying, hey, I didn't heal properly. Now you got to spend the first year of the relationship doing the healing when the first year of the relationship should have been the honeymoon phase. Now we miss out on our honeymoon phase or it doesn't happen until year three because the first two years were healing over trauma that happened with your dad and, you know, three, four guys that broke your heart, X, Y, and Z, right? So mm -hmm. it's a process. So that's why I stress with clients and the people that are watching this live, please take the time to heal. Please take the time to heal because that's the only way you're going to feel comfortable or at least feel comfortable with being vulnerable because vulnerability is never comfortable because if it's comfortable, then you're probably keeping something in my personal <laughs> opinion. And, my, and, and you can tell me if I'm lying, Lauren, right? Those are facts. Right? So if you're being, if you're truly uncomfortable, it's like you said, it has to be like naked. Do you know, like, naked, naked, right? We can't just be, it can't just be me just taking this hoodie off and I have a t-shirt on and blue jeans. It has to be, just only imagine if I was just naked on this live, figuratively, right? Yeah. That would be right. super uncomfortable, right? 
even as much mm -hmm. as I work out and things along those lines, right? <laughs> I would be very, very uncomfortable. The viewings are going to go up. No, <laughs> I, I, I plead the fifth on that. But, um, but at the same time, you get the example, right? <laughs> I would be extremely yeah. uncomfortable. And that's what vulnerability is. I have to be extremely uncomfortable, but comfortable yes. enough to be uncomfortable, right? So you were yeah. comfortable enough to share on a live that is watched around the world. And in this safe space, you're like, hey, I'm going to tell my naked, unashamed truth. And that's what, and, and every woman has to be willing to do that, but it is a process. It is a process. You have to forget the past. You have to leave the past where it is. I understand, you know, you were vulnerable with four or five guys and it didn't get you nowhere and they tried to manipulate you and they rejected you and a man ran at the introduction, right? Yeah. But Come you on. don't know what man number six has because the man that God has for you is going to see your treasure because he who finds a wife finds treasure. And again, mm. I mean, that man will notice that treasure more than your insecurities. So it obviously takes the right man to listen with intent. He can't be a boy. He has to be a man. He has to be willing to listen, sit back and listen, like you said, and attentively listen, actively listen. I have to really be paying attention to what you are saying. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what yeah. you have to be as a man. As a woman, you have that man in front of you that says, hey, I'm willing to listen. Tell me what's on your heart. Tell me what you've been through. Tell me about past experiences. Tell me about something that you haven't really told a lot of people. I want to know those things. Mm -hmm. And you as a woman have to be comfortable enough to take the Wonder Woman costume off and say, you know what? <laughs> All right. This is, this is, this is, this is it. Because yeah. the point that I mean, that you mentioned earlier about the workaholic thing, and that was something that I was going to tap into a little bit as well. These independent women, right? I'm so independent. Right. I'm a workaholic. And like you said, it's something that you can control. And it even goes into last week, right? Where why do men wear the mask? And they hide behind their salaries and their cars and their jewelry and whatever it is that they have, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Because again, that's something they feel like I can control. I can control how much money I make. I could control what yeah. kind of car I can drive. I could control what jewelry I have. I could control what condo that I live in. But being vulnerable, being physic or figuratively naked and yes. exposing me as a man, woo, yes. that's on a whole nother level. I ain't never did that before, right? But that woman has to give them that safe space to say, I'm going to listen to what you have to say. I'm not... Like you mentioned, I'm not going to combat how you feel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to how you feel to at least listen to understand why you do feel that way, right? Yeah. So that's where it comes in on a woman's perspective. And a man has to be willing to do the same thing. But the woman has to be vulnerable, right? We have to put down that, you know, like you mentioned, removing the titles. A woman has to remove the titles too. That independent thing. We got to put that down. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why I mentioned yeah. vulnerability is a process because there are so many things that we have to unlearn. We cannot conform to being misindependent. I'm going to do it all by myself. I got this. I'm good. I don't need a man. Because guess what happens to vulnerability? You said you don't need a man. So you're gonna, are you going to be vulnerable to a man if you really feel like I don't need a man? The devil is a liar. <laughs> so we got to keep it real. So we got to get rid of this independent you know, I'm a strong black queen. Yes, you are a strong black queen, but you don't always have to be a strong black queen. At some point, I need to get naked and vulnerable and say, I'm tired. And I've learned that as a man, because even with my, he said, you got to be comfortable with yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. in my younger years, I'm like, I ain't tired. I'm cool. I'm, I got this, you know, being macho. But after a while, in my <laughs> 30s, I'm like, man, I'm tired, man. I, you know, I, there's certain <laughs> things I, I'm not, I'm not pushing myself to go to the gym. I'm not going to get on the computer and do certain things. I'm, I got to accept the fact that I'm tired, but that's just me yeah. being vulnerable with me. But mm -hmm. that, that's just, that would just be my addition to what, you know, what you mentioned about the vulnerability piece. I feel as men, we got to step up. We got to listen with intent. And there are some things that come with being a man. 
I mean, at the end of the day, if you have a child, it shouldn't be, I'm going to go watch the Stiller game with my boys over spending time with my child. I mean, like, I mean, those are cer- certain things that as a man, that's a boy mentality. Oh, I want to go watch the football yeah. game. I, as a man, I have to realize, like, my wife has to be good before anything else. If I go home and I know that my wife is good and she's taken care of, then – Oh, I, then I can go watch the game, or like you said, catch the second half. I'm willing to make that sacrifice. I'm willing to make the sacrifice to watch the second half of the game. You know, tonight my favorite team is the Lakers. They're playing tonight, right? But here I am on this live, right? I could, you know, I could have, I could have, I could have faked like I had a cold, right, to watch the Lakers, so Brett, right? But I know that my calling requires the sacrifice. Right. I know I'll mm-hmm. be able to watch ESPN highlights all day long on the Lakers and who won and X, Y, and Z. But the people that are on this live right now are on this live right now. They need to hear this message right now. And if I miss this moment, then somebody doesn't see what vulnerability looks like. And mm-hmm. that's the difference between them being ready for who God has for them. And God having to delay it one more year, one more month. Right? It's about yeah. sacrifice. So with vulnerability, mm-hmm. it's a sacrifice. I'm willing to give you my ear, but you got to be willing to give you my truth. Come on. So we got to make a trade-off because I can't give you my ear and you're like, I'm only give you a little bit. The devil is a liar. You got to be willing me to give you, you got to be willing to give me your entire truth as a woman, be vulnerable. Hey, this is exactly what happened. And me as a man, I'm going to give you my ear. And I'm going to listen. And I'm not listening to judge you. A man is not going to listen to judge you. And if so, then you got to look at that man's Christianity. Because we're not supposed to judge one another. So the right man is going to listen with the right intent. And I'm not listening to judge you. Because we all have okay. sinned. We have all have made mistakes. I'm not better than no one. I'm not better than you. I'm not better than a woman I'm dating. I'm not better than anyone. Right? Mm-hmm. We're equals. Yeah. We're equal. So your biggest sin might be as big as my sin. Sin is sin. There's no sin that's here. Yeah. It's like it's not like here, right? You know, you might say, hey, you know, I cheated on my boyfriend. I might say, hey, I drank a lot when I was younger, there's still sin. You know, having sex outside of marriage is a sin. You know, drinking is a sin. Who am I to judge you for having sex outside of marriage when I was drinking every Saturday night? (laughs) Sin is sin, right? We got to be, we got to be vulnerable and say, hey, you know what? That was me, right? And being transparent and being vulnerable myself in my mid-20s that I live for the nightlife. That was my thing. But mm-hmm. now I live for Sundays. I used to I used to live for Saturdays. Now I live for Sundays, right? Oh, Although it's virtual, right? But I live for Sundays now. But that's because I didn't conform to who I was. I accepted the responsibility of transforming and who God wanted me to be. And mm-hmm. we cannot do that without being vulnerable. So just to add what you put, which was very beautiful, I really pray that. This live does numbers, not necessarily just for our viewers, but realistically speaking, seeing what vulnerability looks like. And it's a woman being open and honest about her truth and a man just sitting back and listening, even though you want to say something, even though you want to interject, even though you want to say, well, you know, ask a question, whether it's asking a question about something that you said or me just voicing something that's on my heart, just sit back and listen, fellas. Just, just sit back and listen and listen with the right intent. Don't listen to combat her. Don't, this is not an argument. You're a team. And that's what sometimes we lose sight of. We're a team. We're not opponents. Mm. I'm not competing with you, Lauren, right? It's not about the me. It's not about me trying to prove why you shouldn't feel that way about your dad. Well, that was your dad. That ain't me. But I don't know how that affected you. Come on. So who am I to say, well, get over it. That was 20 years ago. The devil is a liar. 
there are some things that might take 20 to 30 years to get over. And it's not necessarily, <laughs> and it's not necessarily because it was meant to take that long. It's that you never either A, weren't intentional about getting past that situation or B, never had the safe space to do it or C, a combination mm -hmm. of both. So as a man, we got to be willing to listen with the right intent. This is this woman's truth or this is what she's been through. I have to listen with the right intent. I'm not going to judge her. And I, as a, mm -hmm. as a man, I have to be willing to do the same thing. And if you're, if neither person is, and that's one person, one person gets love completely and one person gets love partially. And that's when yeah. you see breakups and divorces and one person is not happy. Oh, I've been miserable the whole relationship. Could have been a result of them not being vulnerable or I mean, or it could have just been with the wrong person or being vulnerable with the wrong person. So that's a big thing too. I told that woman my truth. You know, I got naked right here on live, right? <laughs> And you know, you know, Lauren is posting it everywhere. <laughs> so I mean, I'm like, oh, I'm embarrassed, right? You know, now my pastor sees it and it's like, what, what's going on? You know, this is what you're doing in the pandemic, right? So again, <laughs> how are you going to use my truth, right? So that's just something that yeah. we got to be mindful of. But Lauren, um, I, I thank you for your vulnerability tonight. Um, it, I mean, I'm, I, I'm confident. I know a lot of women are blessed by that tonight. And I just wanted to add those little nuggets. Um, like I said, I'm not going to touch what you did. Um, you know, you gave us a whole word tonight. And I was just here to be Mr. Safety. So thank you for, you know, being vulnerable. And I do pray um, that a lot of women tune into this live. And also men, because, again, you actually get a chance to see a woman be vulnerable. And as men, especially in the, in the culture, they're not teaching vulnerability. So... Mm -hmm. This is a great example for a man. Oh, this is what vulnerability looks like. Oh, I need to sit back and actually listen to what my woman is saying. Things along those lines. Okay, let me not listen to judge. Let me listen to see where I can help her or just maybe just maybe she just needs to get that out in the open, right? It might not even be meant for me to kind of step in and help, right? It might just be, hey, I'm a listening ear. So I feel like, you know, that's kind of where, this is vulnerability in a nutshell. And just to understand that, it's a process. It takes time to feel comfortable getting getting naked, right? It it, it takes it, it takes some time. So that's why I commend you for being brave enough on this live in front of thousands of people, um, being vulnerable. So, um, but again, it, it's a, it's a process. So for the people who are watching and saying, "Oh, I don't know if I'm comfortable enough to do what Lauren did tonight," that's okay. Take this time, if you're, if you're single, take this time to determine, okay, well, how can I be like Lauren? Not necessarily be like Lauren as a person, but how can I, how can I, I mean, it would be great to be like Lauren, right? <laughs> but, uh, it would. right. <laughs> um, but how can I model her vulnerability or at least just me being that vulnerable, right? And understand that you have to let go of the past. Because if you're shaping it off of, well, my dad did this and my ex did this and I was in a horrible marriage and I was vulnerable to a friend and, you know, she, you know, told somebody else. So at the end of the day, we have to let go of the past. The Bible says, forget the past and look forward to what God has ahead for us. We got to be mindful that what God has for us is never behind us. Come the on. Bible doesn't say your blessings are behind you because not because God is <laughs> not going to let you pass on something that's a blessing. Yeah. So your yeah. blessings are ahead. So if you're going to be vulnerable next month, you can't base it off of what happened last year or what happened 10 years ago. At some point, you got to sit down, forgive yourself because God has already forgiven you because if you're watching this live right now, he's giving you grace and he's already forgiven you. So there's yes. no need to do jail time when they say, hey, you're free to go. And that's kind of what regret and forgiveness looks like. It's like sitting in jail, your bond is paid. They're like, hey, you're free to go. And you're like, nah, I'm just gonna sit in here behind bars and just do my time when you're free to go. So that's <laughs> what forgiveness and regret looks like when we don't forgive ourselves and also other people too. We gotta forgive those individuals too. 
because sometimes people feel like I'm not vulnerable because my ex did. So that, that sounds like you didn't forgive your ex for using your vulnerability the wrong way. Or you didn't forgive mm. your father for not showing up and being consistent. So you got to forgive those people and let them go because God forgave you for your sin. So you mm. have to forgive somebody else for their wrongdoing or maybe them not showing up in a certain moment. So understand everyone who's watching, men and women, it is a process. It is a process. I am 35 years old and I am still learning pieces about being vulnerable. So uh, I've been on this earth, you know, by the grace of God for 35 years mm. and I'm still learning about vulnerability. It's a, it's a process. It's a process. But when you are intentional about going through the process and not conforming to what you're used to and being transformed to learn something new, now yes. you're going to be open and vulnerable. And then now, because if, if you understand vulnerability, that also makes you, that puts you in a position to be vulnerable or, or not be vulnerable, but be someone's Mr. Safety per se. We'll, use, we'll just use that as an example. Because the fact that I understand vulnerability and what that means and what that looks like, oh, I could be vulnerable for Lauren or I could be vulnerable for my girlfriend or anything along those lines, right? Because I know how to be vulnerable. I was vulnerable with God and I'm like, when the time comes, if I need to be vulnerable about something, then I'm going to do it. So now I understand vulnerability that it involves listening and sharing, you know, the naked and un ugly truth or whatever. Now I'm like, here, put it on the table. Let's put all of our truth on the table because we've all sinned. We've all made mistakes. There are things that if we can go back in time and change, right? You know, there are some people that we will undate. There are some people we will be unmarried. There will be, you know, one uh, sexual encounter that we will undo, right? You know, all of those different things, you know, I mean, you know, we would undrink certain things. We would undo certain things, but we can't. So the best thing to do is to put it on the table and eventually just swipe and move forward to what God has for you. See, I told you it was gonna do that. Drop the cap. <laughs> hey, you hey, you started, you started, but nah, that. <laughs> I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just coming through in the fourth quarter. You, uh, you know, you had the first three. <laughs> you gave us, you gave us, you gave us fifty points tonight. Cause see, see, but you know, I didn't. We didn't win until you crossed the threshold. That 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 and that, that could be that could be that you can say that to be true. That, yeah, that, that's what the team uh, it looks like. And um, one of the things that you said that um, really resonated with me was you said um, about being uncomfortable, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. One of the things my trainer always says when we're working out is he always yells, trust your trainer. Like when we get that weight, like when he increases your weight, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. And then you like, what just weighted? Okay. This the weight and this the workout. Especially when it's like, uh, um, like anything dealing with like the bat, like you balancing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. He always says, trust your trainer. Mm -hmm. Trust your trainer. I'm like, JJ, do you really think I can jump mm -hmm. on this tight in a squat position holding a 35-pound kettlebell? He's like, yeah, trust your trainer. I've trained your body. Mm -hmm. but right. I wouldn't do that mm -hmm. in your first month. I didn't have this do this in your second month. I didn't even have you doing this type of workout in your third month. I had you do this, this workout once I knew that you were going to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want to tear your muscles up by starting it too early. Mm -hmm. That's a whole word. That's a yeah. That's a cash out worthy word, and that's just that's how God is. <laughs> that's how that's how God is. That's how God is with us. Um, I always tell people God will never give you more than what you can handle. And mm -hmm. if you're ever in a position where you feel like God is giving you more than you can handle, He's either a going to either show you how to swim or take the water out of the ocean. So 
God, like you said, trust the trainer. You got to trust God. So if God is putting you in a position to be vulnerable, he's like, mm -hmm. you got what it takes to be vulnerable. <laughs> You're in this relationship for a reason, right? Or, you know, I'm, I'm calling you to be vulnerable with me for a reason. There's a reason that Jesus called Peter to the water because he had the ability to walk on the water. And had Peter stayed focused on Jesus, he would have been able to walk towards Jesus on the water. There's a reason why Peter was on the water for a short period of time and Jesus was on the water for a longer period of time, right? Because Jesus had faith. So we got to be mindful of that trust who called you. Because if Jesus called you to the water, then that means you can walk on water, even if you never walked on water before. Because Peter never walked on water before. So if God is calling you to be vulnerable, get naked, and be uncomfortable, then God knows you got what it takes. Hey, I made you for this moment right here to be vulnerable with this man or vulnerable with this woman right here, right now. Mm -hmm. I've called you to be vulnerable right here, right now. Like you said, trust the trainer. A good trainer is not going to give you too much weight to carry, right? Mm -hmm. Or coaches, right? So I know as a coach, I'm not going to give my clients more assignment than they can handle, which is why when I do give assignments, they're not, they might be deep in depth, but they're not lengthy in assignment, if that makes sense. Yes. They're deep in depth where it's like, I'm going to require you to think, but I'm not going to say, hey, do a reading, watch this video and do a deep assignment. <laughs> Right. They're going to be overwhelmed. Like, man, this dude is giving us too much. But if I see yeah. that they can handle it, it's like, OK, well, I'm going to give you a deep assignment and I'm going to have you watch this sermon. Mm -hmm. But that's understanding my clients. But how do I understand my clients, Lauren? Got to listen. You got to listen with mm -hmm. the right intent. So vulnerability. How does it work? You got to be willing to listen with intent, the right intent. Not the intent to harm you, but the intent to help you. How can I help you? As we listen to our clients, we listen, how can I help this person? When am I hearing and what can I do to help this person? Mm -hmm. That's how, that's my approach as a coach. And it may be similar with you as well. It's like, I'm listening. Let me hear what they're saying. Yeah. Because I'm like, I want to help you. I'm not listening to your ugly, naked truth to, you know, go tell someone like, man, I had this client that was crazy today, right? <laughs> right? So it's ultimately like, let me, I'm listening to help you. So that's why I tell my clients, get be comfortable. I'm, I'm here to help you. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Yeah. So again, we got to be mindful of that. And I seen somebody put Jeremiah 29, 11, right? Uh, understanding that God does have a plan to prosper. So ultimately, Vulnerability is a part of you prospering. But you got to remember, God has to delay our prospering if we're not vulnerable. Come on. So people who are in this single season who are like, man, I wonder where my man is. Or, man, I need me a woman. But you don't know how to be vulnerable, bro. You don't know how to be vulnerable, sis. God is like... I got to I got to keep that blessing over here until you become vulnerable or become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Like you have to like, especially with training. Right. You have to be, you know, the best workouts are the ones I, um, I adopted this hip workout. Probably I've been doing it for like a year and a half now. And it was like the mm -hmm. first time that I did. That was one of the first times that I was super uncomfortable working out. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm sticking with this. And I still do that workout to this day. I think I did it. Oh, wow. I want to say I want to. I want to say I did it back in 2019, and I still do mm -hmm. it to this day because it was one of the first workouts that really made me feel uncomfortable to where I'm really huffing yeah. and puffing, and I'm <sighs> like, you know, because you know, going through the normal cardio and lifting weights, you know, I'm, I got a little huff and puff, and you know, the weights get a little heavy here and there. But that was one of the first workouts where I was really huffing and puffing and my knees is hurting and the whole nine. I said, I got to stick with that because, again, yeah. I'm like, that's what's going to really help me become, I guess, more athletic or in better shape or improve my endurance. Right. 
is mm-hmm. by doing something that makes me feel uncomfortable. And that's why, like I said, I still do this workout to this day. To this day, I, I've modified it a little bit, but I still mm-hmm. do the same hit workout. And it's still uncomfortable. It's gotten better, right? That's why I add a couple more sprints in there and, you know, do some different things. And sometimes I do, you know, 20 minutes of cardio before I do that workout because I want to be uncomfortable. I want to be challenged. I want to sweat. I want to, you know, I want to be just open. I want to be hands on my knees. I want to be uncomfortable because that's the only way that I can grow. So vulnerability Mm -hmm. deals with growth. When you're vulnerable, that's the sign of growth. Come on. Because if you're still shy about, you know, being vulnerable and you're still hanging on to I'm so independent and I'm, you know, and I don't need no man for this. And, you know, I don't nobody gonna see me cry or sweat. I got this. I'm a good mom. The devil is a liar. We have to stop letting the devil convince us of certain things because the Bible doesn't say mm-hmm. be independent, be strong, work all the time. Even Jesus withdrew <laughs> to pray. Even Jesus withdrew to pray. And it says when you're weak, the Bible says that God will restore you and give you strength when you're weak. But God can't give mm-hmm. you strength if you're never weak or you never appear to be weak. Come on. So at the end of the day, that we gotta we as women, we gotta be more vulnerable and as men too. Because again, like I mentioned last week, you know, we're taught to be macho and strong and you know, man of the house and working two jobs. And never showing our emotions. And now we grow up to be men with cement blocks around our heart and our emotions. So that's why I said Mm -hmm. it has to be a process to where I have to remove that block that's around my heart and around my emotions. And then now I can be vulnerable. Yeah. So we got to be mindful of that. So vulnerability is a process, y'all. Stay encouraged. Um, It's a process. and And here's the thing. How long is vulnerability? It's as long as you make it. <laughs> because here's the thing. The more you fight it and the more, the more you hesitate and the more you fight, I don't know if I want to be vulnerable and the longer you're going to be in the wilderness. Because sometimes we're, because the reason I want to mention Jeremiah 11, 29, 11, it says God has a plan for us to prosper. But 29, 10 mentions that we, that they have to spend 70 years in Babylon as captives so sometimes now that's a long time when we're thinking about it so i mentioned on a live that you might have to do 70 figurative years in babylon but it might not have to be 70 years if you get it right so if you start working towards being vulnerable but if you're hiding it Mm -hmm. no i'm independent i'm a god with my girls i'm a like you say i'm gonna feel that you know, uh, boy with a man and sex and alcohol and money and all those different things, then you're going to be in Babylon for 70 years. You're going to be, like you said, in a facial prison for 70 years before God has to come and say it's time for you to prosper. Yeah. Now you're 70 years old looking for a man. The devil is a liar. Mm-hmm. So we need to put the work in now to where we're not 50, 60 years old trying to find, you know, a spouse, right? We got to put the work in now. And that's why you mentioned you took a loss. So we can have a game, right? I've done the same thing. I've been in my bad, you know, fair share of bad relationships. But at the end of the day, I was able to heal. Now, you know, in the right relationship, right? So different things along those lines. So vulnerability is a process. Mm -hmm. And it is as long as you make it. The more you fight it, the longer you're going to be in Babylon or the longer you're going to be in the wilderness. But when you embrace it and say, I'm going to be vulnerable because God already knows my naked truth. God already knows the worst part about me, but he still sees the best in me. Oh, I'm going to be vulnerable Mm -hmm. because God sees the best in me anyway. God already knows my ugly truth. He already knew my ugly truth before it even happened. So let me be vulnerable with him. Ask him to help me heal. Help me become comfortable with being uncomfortable and help me find the right person to do that with. Yes. And that's the biggest thing. Like we gotta we gotta be comfortable with the or not comfortable, we gotta be vulnerable with the right people. Because men and women mm-hmm. can use that information because you might have been vulnerable with somebody and got crossed. I've done it too. I've been vulnerable. I've shared my visions, my goals, my dreams. And I seen somebody yes. try to literally ruin it. I tried to I literally told someone my vision, my dreams, my goals, and I almost watched them try to ruin and destroy it. And that could have done something to my vulnerability 
But I just realized it wasn't my vulnerability that was the problem. It was just being vulnerable with the wrong person. So yeah. I was like, you know what? That's just the wrong person. So I got to discern, okay, who can I be vulnerable with, right? Because now I can't share all of this information with everybody, right? Different things of that nature. But it's, again, it's, it's a process. So tonight, embrace the process. Rewatch this live. Watch the first hour. <laughs> Watch the first <laughs> hour. Watch the first hour. And that is, <laughs> that is the perfect example from a man and woman perspective of what vulnerability looks like. And if vulnerability has not, look, has not looked like that to you, at some point it will. But at some point, as a woman, you got to be Lauren. And as a man, you got to be me. Just sitting back, listening, attentively, actively listening, no distractions, no texting your boys, no looking at the Laker game, just really focused on your wife, your spouse, you know, the woman that you're dating, or even if it's just, you know, sister, brother, whatever the case might be. But um, we got this. Um, and this conversation will help because we've never, like you mentioned, Lauren, we've never been given an example of what vulnerability looks like. Um, but in 2020, now we have a virtual visual example of what vulnerability looks like. So. Yes, yes. I um, I was thinking as you were talking that this was so not rehearsed. <laughs> hey, this was so not rehearsed. So y'all please share the live. Um, I literally text Carlton 15 minutes before the live and said, are you ready to put me on the hot seat tonight? And he said, I'm really not going to put you on the hot seat. And I didn't know how this was going to turn out. I didn't even know how we were going to start off the conversation. I had no clue. I did not think it was going to turn into poster child example of what vulnerability looks like. But because last week it looked completely different. And this week it looks that, completely different. Yeah. Because vulnerability, was, because vulnerability is different from a man and a woman's perspective. To an extent, yes. to an extent, right? Because for me, it might take me X amount of time to share my truth. But you may say, you know yeah. what? I've never unpacked this stuff, right? And it might take, sometimes it takes people longer to unpack what they've been through. But that's why you have to be yeah. willing to listen. And the right person is going to say, take your time. I'm here to listen. Mm. Take take your time. No rush. No, I, I'm not, I don't got nowhere to go. I'm not trying to catch you know, a football, basketball game, my phone isn't buzzing. Take your time. What's on your heart? And and that woman needs that space. And a woman who has that space, you got to appreciate it. Because if a man is willing mm -hmm. to listen, you better be ready to, hey, this is where this is. <laughs> because the last thing you want to do is had a man, I was ready to listen, man. I wanted to hear her, you know, her truth and what she's been through and where she is right now is a woman and that woman is, oh, no, nah, I ain't about to do that, right? So we just got to be, you know, so again, it, go, it, go, it goes both ways. Um, you know, like I said, as men, you know, we, you know, got to do better. That's a part of loving our woman is Jesus loved the church because Jesus listened to the church, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And at the same time, you know, Proverbs woman, you know, understands you know she speaks well mm -hmm. so it's all about how you speak right so and that's why it goes even in proverbs i think earlier in the chapter it mentions how a nagging spouse is worse than living on the corner of a roof that's correct. so we got to also learn you know how to say things because sometimes it's not what you say it's how you say it so if everything is rah 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 that's not vulnerability. That's complaining. But <laughs> if you're, this is what's on my heart and, you know, your tone, and I think you had talked about that in a few lives ago, you know, your tone and how you say it and are you calm? Is the atmosphere, does it resemble this, right? When we're both quiet mm -hmm. and we're attentive, we're not cutting each other off. We're not like, what do you mean, Lauren? Or I don't understand, right? You know, we're both, you know, just talking and conversing taking our time let's enjoy this moment mm -hmm. because that is going to be contrary to belief that is going to be one of the most intimate moments of your relationship you you yes. think intimacy is 
oh, when we get married and we make love or X, Y, and Z, oh, that's going to be so intimate. When we make love after our, we get married, I'm telling you, this is going to be one of the most intimate moments of your relationship is when you sit down like this and you have this type of conversation with vulnerability, naked, ugly, true. Here is the worst part about me. And here's <laughs> where I am in my life. I still got some healing to do, but here's where I want to be. And that person is either going to help you or they're going to hold you to who you are and who you were. And the right person mm. is, how can I help you? Or not even how can I help you? It's going to be, I am going to help you. And it goes both ways. So that's why I said it's a process because you got to, you got to be mature enough to have that conversation because unfortunately right now not everyone is ready whether it's because mm -hmm. of something that happened in your past whether it's meeting the wrong person whether you know the person isn't ready for your vulnerability so that's why i said it is a process so that's why i said mm -hmm. watch the first hour of this live you'll see you're going to see <laughs> what vulnerability looks like um you know really we can crop that whole hour right in that is <laughs> that that's bone that's a whole vulnerability piece in itself that should honestly go viral um and and i think it'll go viral to an extent obviously it won't be you know cardi b offset viral but at the same time <laughs> at the same time the people who need to see it will see it right <laughs> that's it that's it that's it and it will begin to benefit and manifest and grow and flourish mm -hmm. your home absolutely relationships Yes, all of your relationships. So, I uh, I enjoyed tonight. Thank you for allowing me to have a, a quote unquote coaching session. <laughs> I know I won't I won't I won't bill you. I won't I won't send you my cash app or nothing yeah, like that. Thank you for to be tonight. <laughs> so I hope you guys have enjoyed my coaching session with Carlton, and um, and I don't know I I'm gonna attempt to watch this again. I know I typically watch all my lives every last one. I always go back and rewatch them, uh, cause I, I don't I don't know. Like sometimes I don't know when that is me, so I get to rewatch. This same. one's gonna I'm be a same. little tough, <laughs> and this one's gonna be a little tough tonight to sit down and rewatch. But I uh, I'm gonna rewatch it. I'm going to rewatch it. And so I pray that those of you who missed some of it, of course, I'm going to share it. Of course, I'm going to save it. Of course, it's coming to the app uh, tonight. Um, so um, definitely make sure that you catch it, removing the mask. And if you want to know the first step, you should buy the book Intimacy. <laughs> um, you should definitely purchase Intimacy, which is already out. It's on Amazon. It's on my website um, because you got to start there and get ready because next week, vulnerability pre-orders so okay. <laughs> i suggest you start doing the work mm -hmm. so thank you so much carlton always for being with me and uh giving us your time and sacrificing your time because love is sacrifice absolutely love absolutely so thank you thank you thank you so much and we will catch you guys next thursday on purpose and i don't know what the title is yet so we'll, we'll figure it out i'm sure god will give us something We'll figure it out. So thanks, Carlton. Thanks, Have a Lauren. good night. You too. Bye-bye. Okay,